With PeopleTools 858 already available in the cloud, I want to cover another 858 change you may want to implement today without waiting to upgrade. This is a change that several PeopleSoft customers have already implemented. In this episode, we are going to change the notification icon from a flag to a bell. Now, I'm not going to just show you the final product. We are going to work through this challenge from start to finish. We are going to open the Browser Inspector tools, find the proper CSS, and then create our own CSS override. Now, keep in mind that this is a customization. But as my friend Graham Smith regularly states, a proper customization is good. But the key word in that statement is proper. I am going to show you a couple of proper ways to implement this customization. So here we are in our web browser. And in the upper right corner, we see the flag for notifications. Now, what we want to do is replace that with a bell, the bell being a more common user interface item for identifying notifications. So what I'm going to do first is right click and inspect. Let's look at how this thing is built. What's the HTML that's here? Because that's going to give us some ideas on how we can convert this or change it from a flag to a bell. So first off, we see that it is implemented as an SVG image. Looking at the URL here, I notice it's in the cache, which means it's actually stored in Application Designer. So the first way we could customize or per change this icon would be to apply a trick or technique that Daniel showed us in a prior session. And that is to just open the image in App Designer, right click and choose update to then replace the Oracle delivered image, which was delivered as a flag and replace it with a bell. That's one option. And that's probably the easiest option. But I want to show you a different approach here. This will be all CSS. It's still going to be a customization, at least for Fluid. I'm going to show you how to do this in Fluid. In Classic, we could actually do this as a configuration by using the, the branding module and the CSS include capabilities for a Classic. But here in Fluid, it has to still today, it would have to be a customization. So first off, let's see how this is built. I see that it's an image tag. It's an SVG, so I perhaps might want to follow suit and use an SVG. We covered other image types in another episode. A PNG might be appropriate as well. I see that the size of the image is 25 by 25 pixels. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to open Notepad, and I'm going to take note of that. 25 by 25 pixels. And let's see. If we look at the CSS here in the right-hand panel, we can see that this is implemented with a width and a height and some padding. I suspect that if I were attempting to implement another image or replace this image, I would probably want to follow, use that same CSS just for consistency so that the image stays in the same place, all the other images around it show up in the appropriate locations. Okay, now let's target this image because what we want to do with CSS is swap it or replace it. So we're actually going to turn this one off. We cannot change the image location, the image source attribute using CSS. But we can make this one go away and then attach or associate an image with the outer container. So that's what we're going to do here. So first I need a way to identify this particular element using CSS. In the inspector tool on the right hand side, I can click the plus here to create a new rule. Now the inspector tool will then investigate the HTML and look for any attributes we might be able to use to identify a unique selector, a CSS selector for this item. So I'll click plus and we see that it noted that it is an image element with the ps-image CSS class. That's nice. That's important. It helps qualify, but it doesn't make this item unique. And I want the CSS I apply here to be attached just to this one image, not all ps-image images. So as I look here, I see that there is some unique HTML. There's an attribute here with a unique ID. 
Now we can write an attribute selector. So let's take that approach. So I'm going to add a bracket here for an attribute selector. Name equals, and then type in the name inside quotes here. PT notify IMG. And let's see if it matches. So I'll close my bracket, my attribute selector. And in fact, I know it matches because I can see that the text here is a very dark, bold color versus, as we see down here, there's some CSS that doesn't match or a selector that doesn't match, and it has more of a lighter gray tone. So here's what we're going to do first. Let's just hide it. Display none. Okay, now the image is gone. Okay, next step is to insert an image at the higher level, but as a background image of the hyperlink itself. So again, I'm going to create a selector. This one's going to be really easy. See, notice we have this ID selector. ID selectors are one of the most effective, fastest, efficient ways to apply CSS. Now, they're not preferred because an ID selector requires unique CSS versus, say, a class name that you could would be reusable. IDs are not reusable. But as far as speed and efficiency, an ID-based selector is the fastest and most efficient from that perspective. Okay, now we want to apply an image here. Oh, well, we know we need a bell. Question, where are we going to find a bell? Well, if you've been to any of my sessions at conferences or been in any of my classes, you already know I'm a huge fan of Font Awesome. Font Awesome has this great icon library that we can pull from, and I can almost guarantee there's a bell in here. So. I have this other website, and I'll be sure to put this the link to this site in the video description. But here, it allows me to grab a font icon and download it as a PNG. Now, what we saw earlier was this is a, image is actually implemented as an SVG. So there are a variety of ways we could get a bell icon. This is just one. I could first pull the bell from Font Awesome as a PNG, and then convert it from a PNG to an SVG. Again, there's a variety of different ways. So what I want to do is I'm going to search here in the Font Awesome library. I'm going to search for a bell. And I do see here there's an FA-bell. I see the white background there. I like, I like that basically what that means is solid. I like that it matches what we have here versus perhaps a different icon uh, such as the this one here has a transparent background, so it's just an outline, versus, and this one is solid. Now we can select the color. I'm going to choose white so that it matches what PeopleSoft has delivered for their icons. Now if you're using a different branding theme, different branding colors, you might want to change these icons just to match your own branding theme and color. And then we noted that we want a 25 by 25 pixel. But I don't know. I'm kind of wondering. See, as we hover over this, we, we get a nice little rendering of the image, and it kind of looks like there might be a pixel of padding inside of the image. And I want my bell to match as closely as possible the size of the Oracle delivered image. So I know I want 25 by 25, but I'm actually going to set this to 23. And then we'll go with a one pixel margin. So one pixel up, one pixel down, that's 25. One pixel left, one pixel right, that's another 25. 23 plus 1 plus 1, that's 25. I like it. And you can't really see it here, but there's a nice little bell right there. And now I'm going to click on the Generate button to actually allow us to download this image. But you know what? Let's, uh, let's set that aside for a minute. See, even better than Download, we have this Base64, and we have the image Base64 encoded. Now, did I say better? This actually isn't better. It's just what I like here is it's going to allow us to prototype. And then if we like what we see, we can then take that image, upload it as an image in App Designer, perhaps convert it to an SVG, and then have it cached separately from the CSS. But for here, for prototyping, I'm going to drill right into my, well, here, let's just do it right here. Let's go with background, image, URL, and then we'll put in our data URL. And okay, it's there, but I don't see it. Do you see it? 
No, we don't see it because our hyperlink has no dimension. We probably should have fixed that first. But good thing we saved off some HTML, so some of the CSS. So I'm going to copy that. And rather than type the attributes in here where we get a nice type ahead help feature, I'm going to drill right into the inspector style sheet where I can copy paste. Because copy paste is just going to be easier here. Ooh, I like that. Wait. No, did he just say he likes that? Actually, I do, because now we have some dimension. We can see it's taking the appropriate size, but it has repeat there. Well, let's go back to the type ahead feature, and let's just apply some additional attributes here to fix this up. So let's change the, let's turn off the repeat setting. So background dash repeat, none, or no repeat. And I noticed that the bell is actually up. It's kind of in the wrong spot. So let's fix that as well. How about background dash position? And let's choose center. Oh, I like that. I like that. Okay, now let's let's just do a little bit of testing here. We have the CSS mocked up here. And it's only in our browser, meaning if I refresh, if I get interrupted and my session times out, this CSS is gone. So I want to make sure first thing, let's copy copy this. Actually, let's cut it out of there. Let's see what happens because I want to test. As soon as I cut this CSS out, the notification flag is going to come back. Let's see, does the screen jump any? Does the bell move around any? Does the flag, do the icons around it move or do we have our spacing correct? So I'm going to grab this. CSS, and oh, oh, I like that. You notice that as I cut it and paste it, the bell is in the exact same location as the flag. And I can tell that because the items around it aren't moving any. And looking at the spacing there between the bell and the magnifying glass, I'm pretty happy with that. I mean, you know, we could probably go with 25 by 25 instead of 23 with a one pixel margin. I'm good with this though. I'm happy with this. So I'm going to copy what I have here and I'm going to go into App Designer now. In App Designer, I'm going to create a new style sheet. This is going to be a freeform st sub style sheet. And I'm going to paste in my content and I'm going to save this. How about JSM, that's our site specific prefix, JSM bell, uh, actually this is a flag, isn't it? Flag override FF, FF for free form. And insert that into my project. Okay, so now I have a style sheet, but it's not attached to anything. So the user interface isn't going to show this new style sheet. What we need to do now is attach it to one of the style sheets that's already included with Fluid. So if I look at the Sources tab here, and I can expand the cache, and in the cache I can see there is a style sheet, PS styled F, F mode. Huh. I don't know, but the name there, F mode, kind of makes it sound like it's probably only used in Fluid. And PS styled F, that's the style sheet that is the default style sheet that's used throughout PeopleSoft, has been for years, PS style def. So this is the fluid version of PS style def. So what I'm going to do now is open that top level style sheet, PS style def. And I see, oh, sorry, let's do the fluid mode version, PS style def F mode. And we can see that it is actually a collection of other freeform substyle sheets. Let's insert ours. Insert substyle sheet. And the name is JSM flag override. Perfect. OK, the way CSS works is the last, well, actually, there are a couple of, a couple of rules here. What we want is, well, Oracle has delivered some CSS selectors. What we want is our CSS selector to apply instead of Oracle's delivered CSS selectors. Or we might say we want our selector to override Oracle's selectors or maybe append to Oracle's selector. Maybe we just have a little bit of a delta tweak or change.
So the way CSS works is, number one, the last CSS definition wins, or the most specific selector wins. We can see here that our style sheet appears to be at the top, but these are actually sorted alphabetically. From the order tab, we can see that our CSS is in fact applied last. So if we are overwriting any of Oracle's delivered CSS selectors, but using the exact same selector specificity, ours will win because it is in fact last. So I'm going to save this and then reload. And let's see, I expect it to stick as the bell. And if it does, we did it right. Yes! All right. We did it correctly. So this was a customization, but I would say one that is relatively easy to manage. In fact, I found it quite common for myself to add my own custom CSS overrides to the Oracle delivered PS style def F mode. Then if I need to make any changes later, I can just import that one style sheet. Actually, something that I've done in the past is have one override style sheet that includes other override style sheets. So then when I'm inserting into PS style F mode, I only have to manage one style sheet insert as a customization. In this episode, we reviewed a couple of other websites that, like for example, we got our icon from a different website. And likewise, we looked at the online SVG image converter. I'm going to include links to those items within the video description, just in case you want to look at them later. Now, if you enjoyed this episode, be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe for more content. And we look forward to seeing you in the next episode.